site if you're interested in finding out more information about the Micro B 2.1 plate amplifier. Um, this is a real small little plate amplifier designed around a very tiny amplifier board. Uh, cruising around the Parts Express website, happen to find this. There's a lot more little amp boards there than there ever used to be. But I came across this. So this is what we're using for this. This is Parts Express. I'll put the model numbers up uh, on the video, but it's basically a 4 inch by 4 inch binding post. It has notches, unfortunately, holes and notches already, but it is pre drilled. It comes with four uh, screws, it's got a nice bevel on it, and it has a, a, a foam a gasket for air tightness. But this is, this is it, this is a foundation. Well, the, the first part in designing the Micro B 2.1 plate amplifier is to take the template page of the PDF and, uh, like this, you can see here. It's, um, it's a dotted line here, just cut along the dotted line, cut that out until you have something that looks like that and hold that up to your uh, metal binding post plate and everything will pretty much line up. These two holes that will line up almost exactly, that will tell you that you really have it lined up right and then you can put some blue, uh, blue tape around it and fasten the template to your um, uh, binding post plate and then from there you can mark out the holes. So the next step is uh, to punch out uh, where all of the X's are. The template has little X's. Uh, if you align the template to the plate, the aluminum plate, just right, um, everything's going to work out good when we drill out all the holes. So every one of these X's we have to center punch. There's, there's a couple of ways to do it. I, I use one of these things here. This is a spring-loaded center punch. I think it was like $2.99 from Harbor Freight Tools when I got it on sale. You press down on it, and the more you press, eventually it, it releases a spring and kind of hammers a nice little dent in it. You can do it with a little nail and a hammer if you don't have that, that's fine. The important thing is, is that you get an indent in each one of these X's in the aluminum so that when you drill out your hole, the bit can't walk. It has a tendency to do that on metal. So here's our plate. Um, you can see it's marked top on the, uh, on the template. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure later on that we mark top on this a little bit later so that we know that everything works right. It would be a shame to have to get all done and have the switch at the bottom and have things be in an awkward spot. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to use my, my spring loaded center punch to make a nice uh, indent for each one of these. So for this you just get right on the middle, press, hold. These, uh, these bottom four here, this is where the binding posts are going to go. So there's, there's a little wiggle room there. Um, this is what basically is going to be here. It's going to be um, a couple little bolts that protrude through. But as you can see, this X is pretty close to this. So we want to be sort of careful because if you get too close, you go to drill out and it'll kind of head in that direction. So. There, that's good. Okay, so that didn't take long. It just took a minute, and I'm pretty sure I've got. I can feel a nice little indent. So let's take this off here. Okay. I made quite a few of these, but I've never filmed myself making one or taking it apart. So I just want to make sure I can that you can see what I'm doing. There's our plate, um, completely clean, and let me see, which way is the top? This is the top. Okay, so let me get in a little bit closer here. As you can see, we've got a bunch of really good indentations. It will be very easy, no problem whatsoever, to drill these holes out. With a, we'll start off with a small diameter bit, eighth of an inch, on all of them just to start with. And I think I'll do that right now. Put my goggles on because aluminum does have a tendency to 
kind of move around a little bit. So. Okay, right here. See, where am I at here? See this hole right here? That hole is really close to that, and it's got to be, it's just the way it is, but so when you drill into it, I'm going to try to push a little bit that way so it doesn't have a tendency to go in there and join up with that notch. So you can see there's ever so little material between the hole <laughs> and the notch. That's okay. Like I said, uh, these things are what's going to go in there and, and we're going to draw a fairly big size hole and there will be some wiggle room. Okay. Uh, that's the hard part. I smudged it. So as you can see, you have a perfectly clean and nice looking plate with a bunch of holes drilled in it. These holes are rough. On the back side there's all kinds of uh, goop sticking out, a little aluminum flashing, whatever. We'll clean all that up later. What we're going to do next is uh, we're going to drill out each one of these holes to the right size to put the correct components in. Before I do that, I'm going to actually put blue painter's tape around every place that I don't need to have exposed aluminum just to protect this uh, just in case something happens it's not too hard to drill these little eighth inch holes but some of the bigger ones things could slip a little bit or whatever and we don't want this to have a scratch on it it's no big deal if it does but I'd rather have it look nice and clean you know okay so now that we have our plate um, pre-drilled with one eighth inch holes now we've got it all taped up with some protective blue fingers tape. Now we're ready to drill uh, the rest of the holes. Uh, let me see. You know what I did? I said I was going to mark this as where the top was. And I'm going to do that right now. Top. Because it's real easy to get confused as far as where the orientation was. As you can see I had it arranged not in the right orientation uh, and I'm the one that designed this stupid thing so it's pretty easy to mess up. So what we're going to do is now here, here's some of the components that we're going to install. On off switch this has about a half inch hole. This is the DC uh, power input switch that has a slightly smaller hole. Um, here's the LED that we're going to be using. You can use whatever LED you want, whatever size. You can use have the three millimeter. This is a five millimeter. Whatever works for that. But I just happen to use that because I had them in the cheap. Um, there's also a hole for the potentiometer we're going to be making. That's a different size also. And this little one here is the um, signal input. That's pretty tiny. Now the thing is, uh, some of the bigger holes you don't want to go right to the big hole. Like for instance, the on-off switch. That's a half-inch hole you need. This is a half-inch. Where, where am I here? There's, that's a half inch bit. That's kind of big to just go right into there and drill that one out. So what we're going to do is we're going to take an intermediate size and uh, we're going to drill out a slightly larger hole. Sorry. <laughs> we're going to drill out a slightly larger hole. And then we're going to drill out a slightly larger hole from that. And then we're going to drill the final size. If you don't do this, it can kind of get kind of get messy. Well, rather than um, uh, drill a whole bunch of holes and waste a bunch of time, I thought I would just speed this part up so you don't have to be bored to death. Just know that you go from smaller sizes to larger sizes until you get to the size of the component that you're trying to mount. It's that simple. Okay, all the holes are now drilled. Take the glasses off. So we've got binding posts. They're going to go in like this. And then like this. And basically what you're concerned with is that uh, you have enough room uh, golly, around the, the, the shaft so that the shaft aren't going to touch the, the, the metal. Now they're going to be covered with um, uh, two layers of shrink wrap so no big deal. I just want a little, just a little wiggle room because, you know, 
You'll see. You just need a little wiggle room when you get a little further on. Uh, there's one more thing we got to do I forgot to do, and that's, um, as you can see in the instructions, we got to make a little notch next to this. Oh, can you see that? A little notch in the instructions right next to this uh, potentiometer on that's mounted on the board. The uh, potentiometer has a uh, a little notch right here on it. Depending on how it's mounted, some of them might not be a big deal, but I just make a little notch so that it sits flush. You don't want your vine control knob sticking out kind of goofy and kind of sideways. Actually, let me, let me punch that. Just so this thing doesn't wander. It's the back side, but just in case. Not going through. Just making a notch. All kinds of flashing there, but you can see that little notch will allow um, this uh, to set in flush. That's a little protruding tab. Anyway, small, no big deal, but just. Uh, just wanted to bring that to your attention. So the next thing we're going to do here, this is basically done. We're just going to clean up all of this stuff here. Uh, these holes aren't bad, but we're going to just clean them up uh, real quick. And one of the ways you can do that is uh, with an oversized drill bit, or you can do it with one of these. This is like a counter sink. Uh, it's for um, screws when you drill a screw in, uh, drill a hole for a screw in, and it's a counter sink screw. They sell these things, you basically just turn it by hand and it creates a little countersink uh, area in the wood. Um, that's just what I use. Let's see if I can do this so you can see it. Just going to go over like this, spin it around a few times, gets rid of all the burrs, this aluminum. It, uh, it kind of doesn't cut like steel. Steel is a little cleaner. This aluminum is soft. It creates little burrs and stuff like this. Little burrs are bad for electronics. If uh, something were to get in, it would be ungood. Uh, man, I gotta make sure you can see that. That's the whole point of this. Me talking doesn't do anything. So, um, a little flashing here. So, I'm just gonna spin this around a few times. Try to get rid of that, most of it. That's pretty nice. Around the back side, too. Uh, just gonna get rid of that. Everything will sit flat that way. Um, apologize, this is really jumpy. I'm sorry. Uh, just gonna go over this real quick. Try to clean these holes all up because you don't want any flashing interfering with anything. Wow, look at the amount of flashing on this hole here. If you can see that, that's a whole big old mess. Aluminum gets soft, it starts to sort of melt and, and bend sort of funny. I've never seen it that bad. That was the one where my bit was kind of dull. And I guess it decided to sort of half melt it rather than cut it. There, I got most of it all. There, it's all cleaned up now. So this is all good. You run your finger over it, you don't feel anything funny, you know you're okay. This, I'm making this take a lot longer than it really needs to because I'm trying to wiggle for the camera and everything else. It's really not that big of a deal. Well, this is a shot of the of the plate amp all finished up with all the holes drilled with the tape removed. But basically, you want to make sure the tape stays on it and so you can keep the board protected from uh, any scuffs or anything like that while you're working on it. Well, that's it for this video. The next video is going to show how to modify the board and attach the wires to it and do some assembly on the plate amp itself.